and it was for three days at the Johannesburg Expo Center where the African trade ministers, business people, civil society and trade unions debated the future of the trade agreement between Africa and the U.S. that's due to expire in September 2025. Now key to a renewed African Growth and Opportunity Act should include the development and protection for small businesses. Startups do run the risk of being out competed by large conglomerates in the current form of the act. Now African states made their case to extend this act at the forum last week. We've got Eckhart Nerman who is an economist at the Trade Law Center who joins us this afternoon uh, for more. A very good afternoon to you and thank you very much for your time this afternoon Eckhart. Now, let's start by talking about how a GOA can be used as a tool to deepen the economic and maybe even political relationship and partnerships with African countries um, that we can look forward to when the deal is renewed. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Rufu, and thank you for the, for the opportunity. Yeah, look, I mean, um, the GOA Forum obviously has just uh, concluded, and I think it's important to not forget what is a GOA. And, um, and I think it's important to recognize that it is a uni unilateral and non-reciprocal part of the United States legislation. Um, it is not an agreement that African countries have signed with the United States or have negotiated, like you would typically have in a, in a, in a bilateral uh, trade agreement. And it is essentially a means of the United States moving from a purely aid relationship with the African continent to one of providing opportunities. The United States is the largest consumer market in the world. And, uh, and certainly, if one looks back at the last 23 years, um, it, uh, it perhaps hasn't exceeded expectations. And maybe mm. there are unfulfilled expectations. But certainly, it has gone a long way in, in fostering an economic relationship and a political relationship between African countries and the United States. Um, and, uh, and I think uh, it is also quite important you know, just to recognize, apart from the fact that it is non-reciprocal and unilateral, it is not unconditional. There are certain criteria attached to AGO. Um, and that just needs to be seen as a, a means of the United States. Uh, maybe enforcing is, is a, a slightly strong word, but it, ensuring that certain standards are being met, certain eligibility standards are being met. And if one looks at these standards, um, and I think that's kind of where we need to often look at in terms of not seeing it as an adv adversarial or a meddling kind of standard, but each of these standards is actually quite defensible um, and they are actually a force for good for the large, uh, you know, for the most part. So um, I don't think there is much of an issue with the with the standard. And I think the sooner we realize that and accept the fact that it is really an opportunity, and that even the adherence to these standards improves our own lot, improves our governance structures, improves the rights yeah. of labor and employees, and and so on. Mm. Uh, bearing the unilateral nature in mind, Eckhart, what would you say some of the changes that the U.S. should consider to create a stronger economic relationships or ties uh, between uh, Goa um, and uh, some of the uh, other African countries that are part of it? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's actually the timing is very good because, as you know, mm. um, Africa has been negotiating or moving towards the finalization of a continental free trade area, the African uh, continental free trade area. That has been largely completed. It's not fully implemented yet, but it's been largely completed. And the questions are, how can we make AGOA work alongside or together or, or complement these initiatives around greater intra-African trade? And, um, you know, one can get, uh, or one should probably just um, also remember last year, at the end of last year, the United States, or specifically the USTR, United States Trade Representative, uh, which is the, the equivalent of our Ministry of Trade, signed a memorandum of agreement or memorandum of understanding rather with the AFCFDA Secretariat about supporting trade and investment between the countries. So there are working groups that have been formed and there's a much closer collaboration now to support by the United States to support this process. But in terms of concretely um, improving this the relationship between between AGOA and the AFCFTA, one way of doing it, because one needs to remember AGOA does not apply to all African countries, unlike mm. the AFCFTA. 
And if one takes those countries, those 35 countries that currently still are eligible, and looks, for example, at the rules of origin, what constitutes a Made in Africa product? If we allow content and inputs that a go beneficiary country source from other African countries that are AU member states, that are part of the continental free trade area, and allow those inputs to be further processed in the go eligible countries and recognize that content as being originating content, that certainly would automatically enhance and give a boost to the formation of regional and continental value chains and, and would be a very, a very useful um, play between the AGO legislation on the one hand and the continental free trade area. And then finally and very briefly, if you will, how does South Africa then navigate uh, the AGOA, the, um, the um, Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, but also at the same time building a stronger relationship uh, with the BRICS bloc? Yeah, I think um, it's important to just remember AGOA is obviously a trade arrangement. It's not an mm. agreement, but it is about preferential market access. The Continental FTA is also about integration and the free flow of goods goods and preferential market uh, access uh, to each other. BRICS is more of a political configuration. It does not offer African countries or certainly South Africa any direct trade preferences. Um, it doesn't do away with import duties or other barriers. So um, it is a, uh, there are probably certain benefits to this. China, for example, is an important trading partner of, of South Africa's. In fact, it is the largest trading partner of Africa. But I think um, it, one needs to recognize these things can coexist. It is not about choosing either or. And I think at the same time, let us not underestimate the value of the continental FTA or the AGOA legislation in the opportunities that it gives our exporters and our traders and our employees and our workers um, by, um, you know, by siding with with regimes that um, you know are working in the international area on you know undermining U.S. foreign policy issue uh, 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 interests, uh, for example. I mean, there are a couple of important flashing points at the moment. The U.S.-China relationship is challenging at the moment. The U.S.-Russia relationship is poor. Um, there is the Taiwan issue at the moment. There is a South China Sea at the uh, issue at the moment. So I think South Africa just needs to be very, very careful not to. You know, to navigate these these difficult international relationships um, with with due care and respect the fact that um, sometimes saying less is is better and and not kind of taking sides, especially with this non-aligned stance that that uh, South Africa certainly has. So, um, okay. It's a difficult one, and I think it needs to be done with the greatest and utmost caution, especially as we see now the latest development of more countries joining the BRICS configuration mm. and potentially in the future being seen as a, as a threat to, to the United States and to others. Mm, a very interesting insight and for once this non-alignment stance uh, is uh, something that uh, South Africa should actually hold on to. Uh, Eckhart, thank you very much uh, for your time uh, this afternoon. That is Eckhart Nerman who is the economist at uh, the Trade Law Center. Masako, very interesting insights as to how South Africa uh, can manage its relationship uh, with uh, the different agreements, um, AGOA, the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, but now also uh, the bricks.